it's with the bigger screen and I can see you a bit better. Um, so if you see me glancing off in the corner, that's, that's usually what I'm looking at. And once in a while, you know, we'll have a little tech thing, the call might drop out, but then I'll just flick the laptop on or something like that. So if that happens, it usually doesn't, but once in a while it does just hold tight and I'll hop on again in a minute. Um, and I always like to remind the moms, obviously everyone, you know, as you've heard is at different stages of pregnancy. Um, and so everyone's bodies are going through different things really each day, each week, each month. So um, take the parts of the practice that work for you. If you ever need a rest or anything, feel free. And you'll, I'll usually give a few different options and some of the poses so you can um, choose which one works best for your body. So you know your body best. And, and part of the practice is just kind of getting into that and, and listening to it and just meeting yourself where you are today. So let's start off uh, in a seated position, just whatever seated position works for you. And usually if you do want to play the music, I'll usually have you start it just after the seated meditation, but um, you can be kneeling or cross-legged. Let your hips kind of settle down and take a nice deep breath in through the nose, fill up, gently part the lips, exhale through the mouth and take two more deep breaths like that. So in through the nose, just creating some space in the body, nice and soft out through the mouth. Last breath like that. As you exhale, let the shoulders relax down, let the hips settle in and then seal the lips. Just come to a nice easy breath in and out through the nose. Just kind of coming to the mat just as you are today. Allowing this practice to meet you and support you just as you are. Letting the breath just come in and out. And following it as you inhale and as you exhale. Just kind of letting yourself mentally arrive here. And just showing up for yourself and creating the practice that you need today. Working towards being mindful and you know, honoring the times when we feel great and also the times when we like to, it's better for us to take it easy. A few more breaths here. And then on your next inhale, let the arms float out to either side, nice and high up above the head, palms connect. And then as you exhale, let hands come down to heart center, blink the eyes open if they aren't already. And if you wanna put on some music, go ahead. We'll first set up and seated, just in a cross-legged position, Sukhasana. So have your um, legs kind of parallel towards the top of the mat, flex the feet a little bit. And the legs are just crossed one in front of the other. Take a nice full breath in. And then as you exhale, just forward fold any amount. You can walk the hands forward a bit if that feels good. So just breathing some space into the hips, noticing if there's any tightness there. I'm letting the shoulders soften down each time you breathe out. And then walk the hands back in towards you. And I realized I didn't indicate which leg in front. So my right leg is in front. If your right leg is in front, you're gonna walk your uh, right hand out to the side. If your left leg is in front, walk your left hand out to the side. And then with your opposite arm, reach up and over and just take a little side bend here. If it feels good with that hand that's extended out on the ground, you're welcome to come down towards the floor, maybe not all the way onto the forearm, or if it feels comfortable, you can come all the way down to the forearm. Anywhere in between is good. Top palm is facing down, and you'll just reach up and over with that hand. Creating a little Hey, Jen, Mika just joined body. as well. Okay, welcome. Oh, she just, yeah, I, I think yeah. she just left, but she might just join again. Okay. Okay. And 
And then on your next inhale, rise back up. Let the hand float down as you exhale. And then just switch the crossing of your legs. So same position, just opposite leg in front. We'll get into the other hip. This side's a little less open on me. I can feel. Keep the feet flexed. Take a full breath in, just get a little length on the spine and then nice and easy as you exhale. Hinge forward any amount, hands in front or next to you can support you. And just letting the stretch settle into the hips. Let the belly settle down in between the legs. really concentrating on the exhalation. See if you can allow for a little more release in the physical body each time you breathe out. And then walk the hands back towards you and opposite side that you did before. Walk the fingertips out wide if it feels comfortable to come down, forearm towards the mat, you can. And then with the opposite arm, reach up and over Get into that nice side stretch. Just kind of moving the spine in a few different directions. Each breath in, see if you can reach just a little bit longer, really reaching through the fingertips of that top hand. Exhale, let the hips settle down into the floor. Breathing space into the side body. Last couple breaths here. And then on an inhale, come on back up, release the arm as you exhale, and then come on to all fours, tabletop positions. So just gently uncrossing the legs. If you're seated on a pillow, you can put that aside. Or if you find a, you want a little extra padding for your knees, you're always welcome to bring these to a pillow or a blanket or something in your tabletop. So set up knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Spread the fingers nice and wide, and then moving through a few cat cows. As you inhale, just gently arch the back, lift the tailbone, spread the sit bones. Exhale, cat pose, round the spine, tuck the tailbone under a little bit. Inhale, cow pose, really reach the heart forward in between the inner arms. And then as you exhale and round the spine, really press the ground away. So you get up into that space between the shoulder blades. Let the crown of the head hang heavy. And keep flowing with your breath. Cow pose as you inhale. Exhale, cat pose. If you feel a little tight in your lower back, I like to rock back a bit in cat pose and then just give myself a little wiggle or like a dog wagging its tail. That kind of just gets into the lower back. Keep going through these with your breath. Let yourself move any way that the body's asking to move, whether that's circling the hips or moving the rib cage a little bit side to side. And close your eyes for a moment as you do this. Let yourself just really drop into how things feel today. Oh, it doesn't matter so much what it looks like. Just breathe and move in a way that feels good. Two more breath cycles here. Nice, full, deep breath. Just creating a little space in the body. And then coming back to a neutral spine, tabletop pose, breathe in. As you exhale, just like a mini little push up here, lower down, press back up as you inhale, and then take the knees wide, child's pose as you exhale. Take a full breath cycle here, breathe in. Relax through the pelvic floor as you breathe out. Rise to tabletop, inhale. And then we'll flow through a couple of those. A little baby push up as you exhale. Pressing back up as you inhale. Just kind of like a variation of a vinyasa flow. Back to child's pose as you exhale. And then rising to tabletop, breathe in. Exhale, lower down any amount. And then press back up as you breathe in, back to child's pose. Nice, one more full round with your breath. And 
Come back to child's pose. And then on your inhale, rise up again, tabletop position. And then extend the right leg long behind you. We'll take a side plank. So you're going to roll onto the inner edge of that foot. And then you can spin the left foot out a little bit behind you. That'll just help balance a little bit. Reach the right arm up to the sky. So this is option one. This might feel good for you. You might play around with lifting that right leg if you want that one to float off the floor. If you feel okay taking the full side plank with both knees lifted, you're welcome to take that option. Whichever one you take, lift the hips up, press the ground away. Think about widening across the arms. One more breath in. And then as you exhale, nice and easy, back to tabletop position. One round of cat-cow. Inhale for cow, just nice and easy. Cat pose as you exhale. Back to neutral, breathe in. And then setting up in side plank the other way. I step the left leg back. I like to spin my right foot out a little bit behind me, just makes for a steadier balance. And then right arm underneath right shoulder as you inhale, reach the left arm up. And again, you've got options. You can keep that back foot lifted or you can keep it on the floor to steady yourself. Last breath in. Back to tabletop as you exhale. And then Yogi Bama's choice, downward facing dog, child's pose or puppy pose. So if you, child's pose we did before, knees nice and wide, letting the hips come back. Puppy pose is a little bit in between the two. If you're not familiar with it, thighs are perpendicular to the floor. And you walk the arms forward a bit and then you can set the forehead down and just get a little bit of a shoulder opener. And then whichever shape you take, take five breath cycles here. Just breathing space into the body. After your fifth breath, whichever pose you're in, walk your hands back towards you. We'll find Malasana squat at the back of the mat. So taking the feet nice and wide, letting the hips come down. And you can always use, if you have a yoga block or yoga prop, you can use that to support the hips a bit if you want. I'm just gonna grab, this is my yoga prop, this flower pot here. <laughs> so you can use whatever you have, a bottle or a book. Hands can be on the floor in front of you for a bit of support, or you can bring hands to heart center, elbows at the knees. If you take this op option, Squeeze in with the knees a little bit, press out with the elbows. So you sit up a little bit taller and you widen across the front of the chest. Nice, if it's too much pressure in the hips. And Cindy, you might take your feet, oh no, you look okay. I was gonna say you might take your feet a little bit wider. If you feel like it's too much, you can take the feet a little bit wider or you can lift the hips up a little bit if it's too much pressure in the hips. Nice, reach the right arm long. We'll just open up a little bit to the left. Left arm reaches up high. Right inner knee, just and right bicep, just kind of pressing against each other a bit. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, release the top hand down, other side. So reach the left arm out long, open up a bit towards the right. Heart, belly, chest, all of it opens up towards the right. Last breath in. Exhale, let the right hand float down. And then as you inhale, lift the hips up a bit, bring the hands to the thighs, and then come all the way up to standing. And bring the hands to the hips and just take a couple hip circles here. So just getting some movement in the hips there before we move into our wave squats. So for wave squats, um, Tanya and Aaron, you've done these with me before. Jackie and Sindhu, if you're new to these, take the feet at least mat width apart. Toes pointing out, heels pointing in. And the breath rhythm is a little bit different than what we might be used to. So as you inhale, reach the arms up high. And then stay for the exhale, breathe out. Nice. Inhale, come all the way down through your squat, full breath in. Exhale, rise up. Oh, looks like my video is just frozen. Just check if you guys can hear me. Keep going through these if you can hear me and see me okay. 
Keep moving through. Inhaling to come down. And exhaling to rise up. Nice. Keep flowing through these with your breath. I'm just going to ch double check that my video is working okay because I'm getting a weird. Nice. Okay. It's just my computer and not my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Keep flowing and moving with your breath. And let it be just kind of a moving meditation for you. So linking the breath with the fluid movement, just come down as low in the squat as feels good for you. Exhale, rising up. Pressing down through the feet as you rise up and trying to make each movement just last the whole length of each breath. If it gets to be a little bit too much heat as you exhale, you can make the lips kind of in the shape like you're drinking out of a straw and blow out through the mouth. So let's take four more cycles wherever you are. And keep flowing with your breath, your movement. Last two. Last one. Please let the hands come to heart center. Just close the eyes, pause here for a moment. Let the shoulders be relaxed, feel your heartbeat. And then gently blink, open the eyes. Bring the feet to about hip distance apart. Feet are parallel, toes are pointing. Forward, you can be facing any direction on your mat. We're gonna set up in chair pose. Bend the knees, sink the hips. I'll turn this way again. Sink the hips any amount. You get to decide how low your chair is. And then bring the hands to heart center to start. Breath is nice and steady, just like in wave squats. And then go ahead, reach both arms forward. And on your next inhale, open up to the right. So nice, big arm span. Left knee will come a little bit in front of the right knee. That's okay. Turn your chest and belly facing towards the right. And then on your next inhale, rise all the way to standing. Arms reach up high. Exhale, hands to heart center. Full breath in here. And then into your chair pose again as you exhale. Just stick the hips down any amount. Reach the arms forward. And then on your next inhale, opening up to the left. Left arm reaches up and back. Wingspan, heart, chest, belly. All of it opens up to the left. Stay with your breath here, nice and steady. And then on your next exhale, close the arms, come back to forward, inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale here. One more round as you exhale, bend into the knee, sink the hips any amount, reach the arms forward, and then inhale, open up to the right. And again, it's okay if that left knee comes a little bit in front of the right knee, I know we're used to when we're not pregnant, trying to keep the knees in line. It's okay here to let them come out a little bit out of alignment. Nice. And then on your next inhale, just rise all the way to standing, arms reach up high, hands to heart center as you exhale. Good job, last side, breathe in. And exhale, sink down into your chair pose. And go ahead and reach the arms forward. Nice and strong here, you've got this. And then inhale, open it up to the left. Reaching the fingertips long. Again, you can always breathe out through the mouth if that feels a little more cooling. And then next breath in, back to standing, arms reach up high. Exhale, hands to heart center, and just let yourself pause here. Close eyes. Mm. 
blink the eyes open, release the hands down at your side. And do a couple balancing poses. So if it's easier to come towards a wall and use a wall or a chair or something to steady yourself, go ahead. We'll start with dancer's pose. So you're gonna bend the right knee. So I'll turn this way. Bend the right knee, grab the outer edge of the foot, use whatever it is that help that's helpful to steady yourself. And then start to hinge forward by kicking the right foot into the hand. And you can keep a nice bend in the standing leg if that helps your balance. If you feel pretty steady, you're welcome to put the left hand on the hip or you can reach the left hand forward. But keep kicking the right hand into the, sorry, keep kicking the right foot into the hand a little bit. Do you feel the glutes and the hamstring do a bit of work there? find something to gaze at and then see if you can soften through the face a little bit. So we're often concentrating so much on our balance. Sometimes we tense up in the face. Keep that relaxed. Last couple breaths here. And then as you exhale, nice and easy release. And we'll do a half sun salutation. Separate the feet maybe a little bit wider than hips distance. As you inhale, reach the arms up high. Bend the knees forward, fold as you exhale, nice and easy. Full breath in, lift and lengthen through the heart a little bit. Refold as you exhale. And then back to standing, bend the knees, inhale, rise up, arms reach up high. Hands to heart center as you exhale. And we'll set up for dancer's pose on the other side. So standing on the right leg this time. Again, whatever helps to balance. Feel free to use a wall or anything like that. Bend the left knee, grab the outer edge of the foot. Get nice and steady here. And then start to hinge forward any amount. Kick the left foot into the hand. And then again, that right hand can be used for balance on something. You can reach it forward, you can keep it on the hip. Let the pose work for you today. The most advanced version isn't the most flexible or the deepest version. It's the the version that really meets us where we are today. That's where the advanced practice is, just knowing what we need today, giving ourselves that. Knowing when to push it, knowing when to rein it in. Take a few more breaths here. And then as you exhale, nice and easy, release it. And a half sun salutation again. Inhale the arms up high. And then long exhale, forward fold, ride the whole breath out. As you inhale, lift up halfway, just lengthen the heart forward, refold as you exhale. Bend the knees a little bit, inhale, come all the way up to standing. Hands to heart center as you exhale. Nice, last couple balancing poses. We'll take a warrior three, so we'll go back to our right leg. What did we do before? I can't remember, we were standing on our left leg before, weren't we? So we'll go back to standing on our left leg. You'd think I'd remember it because I'm doing it in my own body. And again, you can bring hands to heart center or you can grab onto the wall or something that'll help balance you. And start to bring the body towards a T shape. So hinging forward with the torso, reaching the right leg back. And you can keep any amount of a bend in either or both knees. So often, especially if you feel any pressure in the lower back, bend the lifted knee, bend the right knee a little bit. And just like dancer's pose, let the gaze settle on something. Let the face be soft. Let the breath be easy, even if the rest of the body is working hard. Nice steady breath here. Last breath in and come back to standing as you exhale. Nice, give the hips a little shake or bring hands to hips, circle them around a little bit. And second side for our warrior three. So standing on the right leg. Again, hands can be at heart center. You can use something to balance. And then as you're ready, hinging forward any amount. And see if you can bring all your attention to the sole of your right foot. Just being aware of all the work that goes into balancing, right? There's always some degree of kind of wobbling, of, of trying to find that spot in the middle. Just 
Steady breath. One more full deep breath in, fill up all the way, and then back to standing as you exhale. And you spring the hands of the hips and just kind of circle them around a little bit, get a little movement in the hips. And then we'll set up in warrior two next with the right foot forward. So right foot forward, back foot is perpendicular to the front. So if I were to draw a line from my front heel, it would kind of bisect the back foot. And then just come as deep in that front knee as feels right for you, keeping the knee in line right over the ankle. And then arms reach long in both directions. Press down through the soles of the feet so you feel some activation, a little bit of work in the inner thighs. Reach the arms long. And let the shoulder blades just kind of settle on the back. And then breathe here. I'm just gonna fix my computer for a moment. Nice, nice steady breaths in your warrior two. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. And then keeping your warrior two legs, reach the right arm across the body and with your left arm, just hook the right arm. So this is a shoulder stretch, just a little more in the upper arm and the shoulder. This might feel really nice for you. Or if full eagle arms would feel better, right arm crosses over the left. And then either the back of the hands or the palms can touch. They kind of work different parts of your shoulder. Just take the one that feels like a nice opener today. You take full eagle arms, lift the elbows to shoulder height, and then draw the forearms away from the face. You really get into that sweet spot between the shoulder blades. I think I'm going to take this variation today. It feels nice for me. So take the one that feels good for you. Nice, steady breath. Nice. Last breath in here. As you exhale, release the arms. Come back to warrior two for a moment. And then interlace the fingers behind the back. Start with the elbows bent and then just draw the shoulders a little bit closer to each other. Draw the elbows a little bit closer to each other. And then if there's space, you're welcome to straighten the arms if that feels good. And then go ahead and unbend the front knee. So just setting up for a modified version of triangle. Press down into the ball of the front foot, fire up the front thigh, and then just very gently hinge a little bit to the right. Usually you don't have to go too far to really feel it in that right inner hip, that right inner thigh. And lastly, just kind of notice the position of your neck. Sometimes we kind of have it pitched forward a bit here. Keep it nice and long. Sometimes that means just drawing the back of the skull back a little bit further than we think we need to. Two more breaths here. Just trace the breath all the way in and all the way back out. Last one. As you exhale, release the arms, bend back into the front knee and just find warrior two for a moment. See if you notice any lightness of the arms after that pose. Exhale, go ahead, release the arms at your side, straighten the front leg, and then bring all 10 toes or both feet parallel, all 10 toes pointing towards the long edge of your mat, setting up for a wide-legged forward fold. I like to take a bit of a bend in the knees here first, sinking the hips back, and then bringing the hands down to either the floor or your yoga prop or block, whatever you have. And you can keep the knees bent here as much as you need to. So. If the floor feels a little bit far away and you don't have a yoga prop, feel free to bend the knees a little bit more. And then notice where the weight of the, the body is. Sometimes it's way back in the heel. See if you can just shift it forward a little bit more towards the balls of the feet. So the weight's nice and evenly distributed across the feet. Each time you inhale, fill up. And then as you exhale, see if you can just let yourself release a little bit deeper into the pose. So we go there with ease, with softness, and not with force. You don't have to push ourselves into a deeper place. 
just use the breath to kind of help guide you into that right place in the pose for your body today. One more full deep breath in. And then as you exhale, walk the hands a little bit back towards you. Come back up to standing. So I like to bend the knees, sink the hips a little, bring hands to the thighs and come up that way. And then we'll just set up for warrior two in the other direction. So if you're already facing the long edge of your mat. You can just switch the feet around, left toes point forward. And then if you need to inch the feet a little bit closer together or further apart, go ahead and do that. Arms reach long. Nice, strong warrior two. And again, find a little bit of activation in the inner thigh. So actively press down through the soles of the feet, make the legs do a little bit of work here. Notice if the left knee is kind of collapsing inward a little bit, just see if you can draw the left outer knee out to the left a little bit. Nice. And then setting up for whatever you choose for your eagle arms on this side, left arm can cross the boss across the body, right arm hooking it, or if you want to take full eagle arms, if you did that on the other side, just know if you take full eagle arms, really get that lift in the elbows and then draw the forearms away from you. You feel almost like a little bit of rounding in the upper back, shoulder blades spread apart a bit. And then using, hopefully, kind of get some opening in the arms there and you forget that the legs are doing all that work. <laughs> Last couple breaths here. Just creating some space in the shoulders. And then as you exhale, gently untwist the arms. Warrior two, reach the arms long. Just a moment here. And then interlacing the fingers behind the back again. Finding that opening across the front of the chest, almost as if you could spread the collarbones further apart. Then go ahead and unbend the front knee. It doesn't have to come totally straight. We don't want the knee to be locked. So feel that thigh nice and strong. And then just very gently a hint of tipping over towards triangle pose. And then just checking in with the neck. I know I have the tendency to just have my chin, kind of my head pitched forward a little bit like I'm looking at my phone. So just draw the chin a little bit away from the chest. And on your next breath in, come on back up. Find warrior two again, bend into the front knee, reach the arms long. And then exhale, release the arms, straighten the front leg and set up for wide legged forward fold again. So both feet parallel to each other, bend the knees a little bit, sink the hips back and then hinge forward at the hips, letting the hands come down to the floor or a yoga block or whatever you have as a makeshift prop. A couple options here, you can stay in just a static nice forward fold like we did before. If you want a little more of a shoulder opener, you can walk the hands forward just a bit like you're in downward facing dog with the upper body. So hands would be about shoulder width apart, walking the hands forward, and then press the palms down into the earth. And imagine you're just kind of dragging the floor back towards you. If the hands are forward, walk them back towards you. And on your next exhale, just bend a bit into the right knee. Inhale, back to center, just side to side with your breath. Exhale, bending just a little bit into the left knee, just getting into the hips, back to center as you inhale. Let's do two more rounds on either side. Just go with your breath. No rush, nice steady movement, full breath. When you come back to center, pause. And then turn the heels in slightly. 
bend into the knees, setting up for goddess pose, bring the hands to the thighs. Nice. And once you get there, toes are pointing out, heels are pointing in. And then bring the arms to like a W shape. So I like to call it warrior mama or warrior woman. And let yourself really sit in your strength and your power here. So both your physical power and also your mental power. This is a demanding pose. If it feels just like too much at any point, give yourself a break, right? There's mental strength in knowing when we need to take a break. Keep the breath nice and steady. In and out through the nose, or just like those wave squats, if you wanna put the lips into the shape like you're drinking out of a straw or whistling, you can exhale through the mouth. Keep the arms as they are. Go ahead, straighten the legs. Just give them a break. Nice. And then turn the palms facing out. So like you're pressing something away from you. Just a little wave motion with the arms. Press it away. Inhale. Draw the arms back in. Nice. Keep going nice and fluid. And it's not like a perfect science. So just in and out. Don't worry about whether you're doing it correctly or not. I'm sure everyone looks good. Nice and steady. Keep the arms going and just sit back into your goddess pose again. Just bend the knees, sink the hips down any amount. Nice and steady. Nice, everyone looks great. Super strong, moms. Stay with it. Keep the arms going, straighten the legs again. And then this time make a thumbs up with your hands and then just thumbs up, thumbs down here. So just, if you're starting to feel a little bit of burn in the shoulders, I am as well. So we're building up our strength to carry around little babies. Stay with the breath, not too much longer. And then keep the arms going last round. Sink down into the hips, any amount. Three more breath cycles here. Inhale, exhale, last two breaths. And then at the end of your third breath, go ahead, release the arms, straighten the legs, and just grab like the opposite shoulders. Give yourself a little bit of a massage here, up and down with the hands. And then last, kind of standing series, heel toe the feet a little bit together and we'll set up in a high lunge. So right foot forward, left foot back. And for high lunge, you're up on the ball of the back foot, but sometimes that can feel a little bit unsteady. So you're welcome to take uh, a warrior one if you would like. Reach both arms up high. And also if you feel wobbly, take the feet just a little bit wider towards the side edges of the mat so that they're like, as I like to say, like you're on a railroad track, it's not a tight rope. Gently grab the left wrist with the right hand, just a little side bend over to the right. Inhale, bring it back to center. Bring hands down to heart center, prayer position. And then if you're in warrior one, come up high onto the ball of the back foot. So just briefly in a high lunge. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, bend into the back knee, lower it down any amount. Inhale, rise back up. Nice, three more. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, rise up. Last two. And then on the last one, lower the knee all the way down to the floor. Nice. And then go ahead, release the hands down to the floor. Setting up for lizard pose. You can also bring the hands to your block if that feels better. Walk the right foot out to the right a little bit. Let the ball of the foot come off the mat, heels on it. And then if you need to scoot your back knee back a little bit, you can. And then just let the hips settle down into the pose. Hands can be on the block or the floor. If you have a lot of space in the hips, you're welcome to bring forearms to the block or the floor. But just be aware if you're really hunching forward and rounding the spine. Sometimes 
bringing the hands up a little bit higher on a block can help with just reaching the heart forward. If it feels good, you can circle the neck around a little bit. Just feel what it feels like to kind of settle into this pose. And walk the left hand just a little bit off to the left. And inhale, open the right arm up. So just a gentle twist. You're not twisting across the middle of your belly in your midsection. You're turning your whole chest and belly towards that right inner thigh. One more full breath in, reach the arms nice and wide. And then as you exhale, let the top hand float down. And we'll come into an angled half split. So walk the hands back. I like to use a block for this. Rock the hips back, unbend through the front knee. And both hands are inside that right leg. Flex the right toes back towards you. Nice, looks great. And then toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Yep, reach your heart forward. So just getting a little space in the back of the legs. I know everybody these days has like tightness in the hamstrings just because we're not getting outside as much as we used to. We're doing so much sitting. One more full breath in here. Okay, so then as you exhale, gently bend into that front knee and just step back to child's pose. Knees nice and wide. If it would feel really good to take a downward facing dog instead, you're welcome to do that. Child's pose, take the knees wide enough to create space for the belly. Let the hips come down towards the heels and just set the forehead down on the floor. Breathe into the back side of the body. And then walk the hands back towards you. We'll come back up to standing and set up our lunge on the other side. I like to kind of tuck my toes under, just roll over my toes and come up to standing that way. Come up however feels comfortable for you. And then last side, standing pose, coming into your high lunge. And making sure the feet are kind of on parallel tracks but hip distance apart. That really helps with the balance. Reach both arms up high. And then just adding a little side bend. So left hand grabs the right wrist and just a gentle side bend over to the left, kind of emphasizing that stretch in the front of the right thigh, the front of the right hip. Inhale back to center and hands to prayer as you exhale. Take a full breath in here. And then exhale, lower the back knee down any amount. Just a little bit of a lunge here. Inhale, rise back up. Three more. Exhale, lower down. Nice and steady with your breath. And then on the last one, lower all the way down. Knee comes to the floor. And then setting up for your lizard pose. Hands come to a block of the floor. Walk that left foot forward a little bit and then off to the left. And I like it at the foot at about a 45 degree angle, just so my ball of my foot's off the mat and the heel's on the mat. But it's not, it, you find the position that feels right for you and then just let your hips settle down. You can untuck the back toes. Breathe space into the hips. Relax a little through the shoulders and just drop any effort from the pose. Letting the thighs, the hip flexor, everything release. And finding a softness with the breath and the body.
Walk the right hand off to the right just a little bit. And that gentle twist, just breathe the left arm open. The whole chest and torso turns to the left. Last breath in, exhale, float the hand down and just coming back to that half split. So walking the hips back, walking the hands back, unbending the front knee. And it doesn't have to come totally straight. My leg normally doesn't. I don't have super flexible hamstrings, but really actively flex the toes back towards you. And think about keeping the spine long. So hinging at the hips, reaching the heart towards the front of the mat and just drawing the shoulder blades gently together on your back. One more full breath in, breathe all the way in, fill up. And then as you exhale, bend into the front knee, walk the hands forward and just find your child's pose again. Step the left foot back, knees nice and wide, hips settle down towards the heels. Give yourself space for rest. Just meet yourself here as you are in this moment. If the mind wanders off the yoga mat, bring it back. And finding contentment just in each breath. Walk the hands back towards you, coming to a kneeling position. And we'll just set up for kind of like a modified camel pose. I'm going to center myself a little bit more. So in a kneeling position, he um, knees are kind of hip width apart. Just walk your fingertips back a little bit. And I like to have my fingertips pointing back. Fingertips can be on the floor. If the palm reaches the floor, that works too. As you inhale, lift the heart up, roll the upper arms outward. So widening across the chest, the front of the heart. If it feels good, you're welcome to lift the hips a little bit off the heel as well. And then as you exhale, if you lifted the hips, set them down and then just come back to your kneeling position, set the hands on the thighs, close the eyes, pause here for a moment. And then blink the eyes open. Come to a sitting position. I'm gonna give you two options for an outer hip stretch. The first one is double pigeon. And in this one, you stack the ankle right over the knee and knee over ankles. This one can feel pretty intense. If it doesn't feel right for you, I'll give you a second option. But in this one, shins are parallel to the top edge of the mat. And you can also pop a pillow underneath that right knee. So my right leg's on top, right knee's lifted. The second option is seated figure four, and you just cross the right ankle over the left knee. And this one, you get a little more control over how intense the stretch is. So if double pigeon feels like too much, this one's a nice option. And then if you want a little deeper stretch, you just walk the hands in a little bit closer, bring the chest a little bit closer towards that shin. If you're in double pigeon, it feels pretty spacious in the hips. You're welcome to fold forward any amount. So just giving yourself the pose you need today. Whatever the body feels like today, make the practice work for you. Two more breaths here. And then as you exhale, let it go and just switch sides. So whatever pose you're in, opposite leg, and it's pretty common in the hips to feel 
like one is more open than the other. So that's just information for us to notice. Just showing up for yourself by being here and being present on the mat. That's where we're really doing the work. Breath by breath, moment by moment. And take three more of your most mindful breaths here in this pose. And then as you exhale, go ahead, release the legs and just extend both legs long for a forward fold. So take the feet as wide as you need to, to create space for your baby. Flex through the toes. If it feels nice to sit on the edge of a pillow or something, go ahead and do that. Sometimes that helps neutralize the pelvis a little bit more. And just take a nice full breath in, lengthen through the spine, fill up, and then easy exhale, forward fold any amount. Hands can land on the mat, the shins, maybe they take the toes. Let the shoulders settle down, let the hamstrings unwind. And then gently draw yourself back up and we'll set up for final resting pose. So if you come regularly and you have a pose that you know you like, I'm gonna demo a couple options for you. I'm just gonna grab a couple more pillows. So option A is lying on your side. And this one, you kind of make a little pillow stack. I have a variety of pillow sizes. So you can use any pillow size that you have. And for this one, come to lying on your side and the top leg just sets on top of this. You can use the bottom arm as a pillow. You can use another pillow under your head if that feels good. And if you do feel like you have a, a little bit of sciatic on one side, if you put that leg on top, that'll probably feel more comfortable for you. Another option, if you're comfortable lying on your back, you're welcome to do so or take legs up the wall. And another option is against the wall. You can kind of prop yourself up with some pillows and just kind of make like an angled seat for you to lie back against. The most important thing is to set yourself up in something that's gonna be comfortable for you, that you can sit in for a few minutes and that allows you to feel supported. When you get to that place, let your eyes close. Let yourself be here in these last few moments of stillness, of quiet. Letting there be comfort and ease in the stillness.
couple more minutes here. Just check in gently with your thoughts, with your mind. Come home to your breath and your body. One more moment here, one more minute here. Just breathing and being. You're not worrying about the doing, letting yourself be here. start to deepen the breath just a bit. Wiggle the fingers a little. Move the toes. And then if you can comfortably keep the eyes closed. Go ahead and do that if it feels better to open up the eyes as you do so. Just gently press up to any seated position. And take your time, no rush. We'll meet in a seated position. When you get there, bring both hands to your belly. Just feel the warmth of your hands on your belly. Take a moment to connect with your baby, with your pregnancy. And then bring palms together at heart center. And when you're open, blink open the eyes. And thank you so much, moms, for joining this evening. So nice to have all of you here in class, some new faces and some familiar faces. Um, if you have any questions about the practice, let me know. And we've got a few prenatal classes a week. So I'll be teaching again on Sunday morning if you'd like to join. Thank you. Thanks for coming. My, um, my computer is being a little wonky today. So my video just went out again. So I feel like I can't see you, but, <laughs> but you can all see me. I don't know what's going on with my laptop. Um, there we go, there it is. Um, yeah, hope you have a good evening. If you have questions about any of the poses or anything like that, let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining, nice Thank to meet you. you. Yeah, likewise. Hey, Jennifer, how do I sign yeah. up for your classes? Actually, I heard about it from um, Erin, uh, who is my hypnobirthing coach. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nan mentioned that here. I'm going to put this camera on so it's better. I can see you. Um, you can do it on the Yoga Family website. I so see. it's okay. just Yoga Family, family with a P-H. Got it. Dot com. And they've got, we just have a, we have a limited schedule right now, but we have a couple classes a day and there are, um, there are a few different prenatal classes. So we have prenatal yoga and then we have a strengthening, strength training class that's called prenatal, prenatal and postnatal power. So um, yeah, those are a couple, I think we have one, two, I think there's four different prenatal classes a week on there, on the schedule. Right. Okay, I'm looking yeah. at the website, so I'll figure that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Thank then feel so free to email if you have any questions as well. All that info's on there, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Awesome, thank you. I heard nice. And who did you say your co you said someone named Erin? Erin Acharya. She, okay. Yeah, she it's is a doula. Evol no, she's a hypnobirthing coach. Oh, I did cool. a course with nice. her and she's yeah. um, uh, her uh, practice is called Birth Evolved. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I heard about that I can join okay. this class today. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And have you been, were you doing yoga um, before your pregnancy or have you been doing uh, it throughout your pregnancy? Uh, yeah, it mostly in my second, third trimester is when I've been yeah. doing it more regularly, but I was practicing a little bit before as well. Before Good. pregnancy. Nice. Okay. And that was today's practice. Okay. For you. I know some classes are stronger. Some classes are more gentle. So no, no, this was good. Yeah, this was perfect. Okay, great. And hips are feeling, hips are feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, it was so nice to meet you. Yeah, I'll be teaching on Sunday morning at 930. Um, and then we have this class every Wednesday evening, too. Okay. So